Welcome collectors, today I'm going to be talking about my vintage 1977 Star Wars blueprints. In the blueprint set they give you one or two angles of each of the machines depicted. As you can see this is the starboard or right angle of R2-D2. So here you can see at the top we have the access panels. Which is an interesting inclusion, I think, because I don't believe that R2 ever uses anything from up here in the first movie. But I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm pretty sure that he actually didn't. There was obviously no scope, because that was an empire. Um, other than that, I can't think of what else R2 uses from up there in the original trilogy anyways, besides Luke's lightsaber and Jedi. And you can see here his radar eye, which I think is funny, because... Why wouldn't he just have a camera? You know, the radar technology, I guess, which is funny. And then you have the hard data input, which is where the rebels plug him into so they can get the data from the Death Star onto that screen where there's vector graphics. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. There's really not much other stuff that's labeled. Something that's of concern are these creases. Because of the way that these are stored, they have to be folded up, and they're 43-year-old pieces of paper. So, I think I should really do something about that. The second one in the set is kind of weird. It's the Sandcrawler Tread. Like, it's kind of a dumb one to include. Like, who, who cares about the detail of the Sandcrawler Tread? Now this, I think, is a cool inclusion. The Skyhopper. And it's because it's not really used in the movie. So you never really get to have a good look at it besides him flying it around as a toy. And especially back in 1977, when nothing else for Star Wars existed. So like, yeah, nowadays you have the expanded universe that goes into all the details of what the Skyhopper is and why it's used for farmers and whatnot. But back in 1977, nothing else existed for Star Wars. Like, not even toys, really. This, these came out before the toys were released. The problem with a lot of these notes and little labels is that they're so small that the letters kind of merge together, so they're pretty much impossible to read. So that's too bad, but at least you get a good look at different angles of the Skyhopper. This is a very good example of these blueprints. This is another really cool inclusion. Luke's Landspeeder. And something I really like about these blueprints for the Landspeeder is that they have these wheels under the side view of the land speeder because it's basically like Luke's car, you know? Something else of note that's really interesting is that the turbines on the sides and top of the land speeder are actually like more squared or rectangular instead of being circular like in the movie. These blueprints must have come from a stage that was between the Ralph McQuarrie drawings and the final product. This is definitely one of the weirdest inclusions, the Mobcat land speeder. And it's actually called the A1 Deluxe Floater. And it's actually never seen in the original cut of Star Wars. It was not seen until later in the 1997 Special Edition. So it's really interesting to me that they even made this into a blueprint. But it's also interesting that it never made it into the movie, but they were still thinking about it at the time. And it was finally added in many years later. This is the exact same thing as the last example, another land speeder that was intended to be in the background of the Mos Eisley spaceport, but it never made it into the original cut of the film, but was then added into the 1997 special edition. This one actually did appear in the film right outside of the cantina, but what's interesting about this one is that it looks like a giant BB-8 head. Not only that, but it looks really similar to the pods from 2001 A Space Odyssey, which I also love. This one here is an interior view of the cantina. I believe that this section here depicts a top-down view of the bar, which is right here. And this is a side view of the bar, obviously, of all the machines used to make the drinks. Here's another great one. The cockpit of the Falcon. So it looks like here is a top view, and then we have a side view of a section of it. A front view, and what looks to be a back view with the door, as if you were facing towards the outside and then there's the door. And although this may seem like a strange inclusion, this was actually the biggest set in the entire movie, was the landing gear part of the Millennium Falcon. And it's where an iconic scene takes place. 
when the stormtroopers come to try to stop the Millennium Falcon from leaving the Mos Eisley spaceport. Han's eyes light up as he starts firing back at the stormtroopers. Chewie, get us out of here! These are of the interior chasm and corridors of the Death Star. These would be really cool displayed behind my Kenner Death Star. This one seems to be a side view of one of those same inner chasms depicted on the last blueprint. The Death Star Detention Point. This is where yet another very iconic and one of the funniest scenes in the original Star Wars takes place. Specifically in this room. Everything's fine, situation normal, how are you? And I believe that this is of where the princess was actually held? I'm not 100% sure on that, but that's what it looks like to me. And this last one here is actually a really great inclusion. The tractor beam generator and power trench. Here's the catwalk that goes around the tractor beam generator. And I think that there were actually supposed to be two that were right next to each other. We just didn't see it in the film. And here you can see an outline of Obi-Wan put in there, probably for scale. In fact, this real set was probably about that high off the ground relative to somebody of that size. Because what they did was they took a matte painting and blocked off all that and made it look like a chasm that dropped down thousands of feet. 